Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about objective, Ob or being objective, and know if you're good, so let's get into it. So the question in question was, hi Frederick, is there an objective way to know if one is a solid developer or if, or on your way to become one? Well, I would say that it depends on if you and I can agree on if it's possible to, in an objective way, say that anyone is good or bad at anything. Because, dear lord, I'm tired of talking to people who have this idea that when I use a term, that term somehow doesn't resonate with them. The intent I'm expressing is the right thing, but for some reason they want me to use a different word. And I've always found the same thing. I'm not saying that it's for every single situation, but most of them I find when I use terms like you're good, or you're bad, or you have talent, or you don't have talent, or you're skillful, or you're not skilled, people who have a little bit of a low self-esteem get triggered by the idea that there might be some expectations on someone somewhere and that maybe you're not good enough because nobody wants to feel like they're not good enough and even just hinting at that there is a possibility that, that could be true seems to be a very sore point for quite a lot of people so I will ask you is there such a thing as being good or bad at something can we objectively determine that because quite a lot of people will say that that's not possible and quite a lot of people will say that it is possible and we can debate that forever what I usually say is this we have athletes for example in sports and we have different classes of athletes where some people are at the highest level and might compete in the Olympics and some people are hobbyists that just go out and do some fun every now and then could we agree that one is at a higher level in terms of how well they perform versus another I hope so because if we can agree on that then we can agree that there is such a thing as good and bad because if you take a hobbyist and expect them to perform in the same way if you put them in the Olympics they're gonna do badly and if you take one of the worst Olympic athletes and ask them to compete with the hobbyist even though they are the worst at that level at the, uh, the Olympic level they're going to be pretty good at the hobby level. So, can we agree on that? That's objective, is that possible to say? I hope so, because if we can, then yes, I can answer this question. So, the easiest way for you to figure out if you are a solid developer or if you're on track to becoming one is fairly simple. In theory, there is a problem with it that is even a little bit more tricky I would argue than for the people who do sports it's a little bit the same problem for artists or musicians or so forth but we're gonna touch on that as well and that is that there are only two things that you need to be able to do in order to be quote-unquote a solid software developer and these two things are very easy you have to deliver working code and you have to do it within a reasonable time frame those are the only two things that determine whether or not you're a solid developer or not for most people, for most intents and purposes. Now that is easy to say, as my, you know, you might feel that, that is very obvious, but it's actually very tricky to do. So because it involves quite a lot of things, and that's the dimension that you have as a problem uh, that these people who do say running or things like that might not have. Because as a runner, the way to determine whether or not you're good or bad is do you finish the race in a given time frame? And that number is the only thing that's going to determine whether or not people consider you're good or bad at the thing, usually. If you're winning or like if you, how fast you run, things like that. For us, it comes down to, uh, did you write good code? Like, uh, Because you can be evaluated on if you're a solid developer in many ways. Like you might have your coworkers, they might have opinions about, do you write nice and clean code? Do you not? Do you have a like? Are, are you good at taking care of all this like bugs and things like that? Are you a nice time to collaborate with? Like, there's a ton of different areas where people will evaluate you uh, when you appear with the other software developers. And then you have your managers who's going to go and ask you, are you fast enough? Like, did you deliver this thing 
on time. If not, uh, like, why are you so slow? And then you have things like, do you have a lot of bugs? And if you have a bug, how fast do you fix the bug? Like, you have all these different types of expectations from different people who are going to try to determine whether or not you're good or bad, or like, they will have different opinions. And that will be as subjective as you can possibly imagine. It is practically impossible but I tell people when they ask me can you tell me if this is a good software a good developer or a bad software developer and I always say the same thing are they meeting your expectations and usually when people ask me this which is usually some manager somewhere these days who asks me to evaluate a team and I ask and I ask that question they say no they're not really uh, meeting our expectations what are your expectations and then they say, oh, that's very, they are really, really slow. Okay, cool. Then you can fire them immediately, basically. And they kind of look at me like, oh, how can you possibly say that? And I can say, well, because if they're too slow, and they've been working, in most cases they've been there for a while, then there's really only a few things we can do here. Either we can simplify the code so it's easier for them to work, we can try to figure out if there's some circumstance that are making them slow or so forth, like there's a million things that could make someone slow, right? But most of the time, we, you as a company or as, like a, as a job provider, you're not going to be able to do much about these things. Some of them you might be able to. My, my favorite one is, that, as I said, like every single software developer complains about the state of the code base. And usually when they say that things are taking, people who are a little bit on the slow side, they usually complain about the code being in a bad state. And I go, yeah, it is. But we have a lot of other people who are able to deal with that fact and still deliver on time. Because if they were not, then all of everybody should would have been, you know, then the manager wouldn't come to you and like single out individuals. They would look and say everybody's too slow and that's the thing that I'm saying here like depending on the state of the code depending on a range of factors you might be fast enough to meet the expectation of a given company they might have unreasonable expectations that's a classic one as well that they want things to be really really quickly quickly delivered when the state of the code base is so shit that there is no way for anybody to actually fulfill those criteria and then of course I tell them that and then they ask how do we fix that and I say it's easy you rewrite the system or like you simplify the code and that's what I usually tell people that's the thing I can help them with if they want if you want your developers to be able to work as fast as possible you have to provide them with one part like <laughs> a solid setup that they can work with or you have to have code that is in a state which they can use in order to deliver faster and stuff like that and that I can help them with but the thing I can't help them with is the inheritability of the developer and that's the thing I'm talking about when I say can we agree that someone is good or bad because you might be a software developer who is in a project or in a situation where you're out of your league like this is too difficult for you especially like it's for the juniors this is very common where you might be put in a situation where you are expected to perform in, a, in an area where only a senior would be able to do the work but you are a junior and so now you're out of your league and people are going to set expectations on you that you can't possibly meet and that's the factor I'm talking about that is difficult for you to determine you can't tell if you're good or bad based on just one job or so forth and so forth it has to be a little bit of a pattern and you have to build up some idea of where are you in comparison to other people which is roughly at your own level and so that's why I'm saying that this way to figure out if you're solid or not really comes down to that. Can you, on average, even like some exposure to other people around you and so forth, on average perform at roughly the level that someone with your experience level and background and so forth can perform at? And do you usually deliver roughly on the same sort of time? It's a scalar, it's no, there are no absolute numbers here. But if you, if you can do that, then you are quote unquote a solid developer and then re the rest of it is really just increasing the range because as I like to say that every job is a little bit different so as I said you can be in one situation and in one role in one company and be way out of your league and have no chance in hell to survive in that company but in another situation you might be able to survive because the state of the code the company all these different circumstances might be different that's the thing that is complicated for us that is easier for the athletes where they almost always have the same circumstances when say they're gonna run a race or something like that for you it varies every single time and you know that you're on your way to become a solid developer when you start to figure out that well 
at least the stuff that is mostly within my sphere of in like responsibility that stuff I'm pretty good at and on average I can do the work that people at my level can uh, is supposed to be able to do and then whenever something new comes up you're just going to have to try to and that usually gets easier with time with the more experience you get you're going to get some new stuff that you might be a little bit worse at because you haven't been exposed to it and so forth and then you adopt that into your arsenal of knowledge and then you're going to expand your width as a software developer so what i want you to take away from this is that i if you can if we can agree that there is quote unquote an objective way to say someone is good or bad my def as i said the way i usually tell you is okay are there good artists are there bad artists most people will agree that there is some way of saying that someone's good or bad whether that's objective or not i leave for you to decide but yes i would say so and the closest thing i can give you is that if you look at what the average like what most people within your your role and your rough your roughly your experience levels are producing can you do roughly the same sort of res give them like you produce roughly the same sort of results it's the same thing as i said with olympics or stuff like that if if you if you are the last in a race in the olympics but you're off by you know a few microseconds or milliseconds or something like that then yeah you are probably meant to be there if you're like me they would have finished the race before I even even left. Like I, I'm, I'm probably practically going to be out of the gate when they're done with the race. So I'm probably not the sort of person who's going to do all that well in that arena. So I'm pretty bad given the context. But as I said, if you give me a sl simpler context and a shorter race, an easier race, or maybe I get to compete with a bunch of people who are all super, super, super overweight or something like that. Yeah, then I'm going to be pretty good. Maybe I don't know the same thing for you if you're in a few situations and you see that on average you can keep up with the other developers that are at your level and you're usually able to ship on roughly the same time as everybody else and like so forth then you're pretty solid because now you're meeting expectations and you know that you're on your way to become a solid developer when your range of things that you can say that yeah I can do the CSS or I can do the HTML, I can do the back end or I can write my tests and stuff like that. If you can do all these normal tasks that most people are doing within, as I said, these boundaries, then yeah, you're doing really well. You're becoming a solid developer uh, or you are a solid developer. And then the rest of it is really just to take it as it comes. Because I promise you guys, you, you, even the, the IT industry is gigantic. There's so many times where you could be in a new company where like they're using a different tool set or different stack or stuff like that. And before you know it, you have been in the situation a few times where you have to learn some new skills and hopefully you will adopt those things and get to exactly the same thing I was saying. You may not be a master of every single thing you have to work with, but at least you can meet the expectations of the people who are working there. And as long as that is happening, you're good. Have a great day.